And welcome back everyone to Final Fantasy X-2. In this episode, we're going to complete all of the episodes. Yay! I know that kind of sounds like a paradox, but by this point I'm sure you know what I mean. So, um, what I am going to do before I go get all those episode completes, I am going to just deal with not all, but most of the side quests that I've been uh, overlooking. I know there's one or two dungeons that I do miss, and I apologise for that, but that is because I am saving them for New Game Plus. I want something to do when we go through this again. So, uh, yeah. Um, first thing I'm going to do is come to Poseid, uh, speak to a particular NPC, not that one. I went to the complete wrong side there, it's the other side I want. Um, there's an NPC who gives you something called the Search Sphere. Okay, so what does this search fear do? It allows you to engage in another treasure hunting kind of mini game in Besaid. Okay. And uh, as described here, you, it only works in Besaid. But uh, as soon as you leave this room, well, as soon as you leave the temple, you get a little uh, indicator on the screen telling you how close you are to a piece of treasure. Oh, so, well, okay. So let's go find these bits of uh, treasure. Actually, I say treasure, it's not It's not really treasure, it's more, uh... You'll see in a second. So there is one in the village here. So what I'm gonna do is move over to the left-hand side, about this way. Oh, right, okay, I see now, so... Yep, yeah, switch on the sensor, and... Let's look around for... A certain something. I just need to make it ping, and then press the A button. Let me just, just had that. It. I think I did as well, and I've lost it again. You lose it. There you go. There, oh, there you it is. had it again. Have, there, it, have it, have there, it, have it. This is where I figure you got out. it. This is where I figure out I need to hit A. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm getting there. <laughs> it's oh, gonna happen. God. Sorry, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna be so good. Let me, let me figure this out. Let me suss it. Let me suss it. Come on, David. You can do this. I believe in you. Just press, just press X. God damn it, just press X! <laughs> I'm gonna do that, I swear! I'll get there eventually! <laughs> I think I chose not to speed up the footage for comic purposes. Anyway, there we go. We uh, we dig up this thing, this sphere. When you look into the sphere, it serves as a, ca as a camera. Kind of like Shinra's comp sphere. Yeah. And what you do is you have to find a very specific spot. In this case, it's that spot there where we get the number eight. That is one of the four numbers we need. Oh, you need to remember numbers. Yep. Uh, only four, thankfully, but unlike the earlier puzzle in Besaid with the numbers and spheres, the game does not remember them for you. You have to do it yourself. So, uh, so that's where a piece of paper comes in, Andy. A piece of paper does help quite a lot. And they are randomly generated, so you cannot just cheat this. You can't just be like, oh, I'll take the number off an FAQ. Nope, doesn't work like that. Uh, can you spot the next one? On the ridge. There it is, right on the ridge, nine. We got an eight and a nine. Uh, God help you in terms of figuring out what order these go in, but... Oh, we have to still figure out the order as well. Apparently, yeah. The game doesn't really ever tell you what the order is, but... Okay, I mean, that's a bit. You'll get there eventually if you just throw those four numbers in random orders. So, next one is over on... Uh... Is it up the top or on the right? I have a feeling it's on the right. There it is. Yeah, there you go. Number two. We got an eight, a nine, and a two so far. And the last one over in this corner. Which up to now, this area has been pretty much useless in the game, so this is the only reason it's here. Uh -huh. Wow. It's for this. Um, and three. it is a three. Lovely. So eight, nine, two, and a three. Brilliant. Now let's... Punch those numbers into the cave. There was an extra door in the oh, cave that yeah. you couldn't access before. This is how you access it. I remember that now, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It all comes together from like 30 odd episodes ago. It all comes together. So over this way, and this is where I just randomly throw the numbers in, hoping that it works. 8923. Oh, hey! Got it in the right order and everything. So it's from the village down, essentially. It's what you want to go for. Um, there's some camera fuckery there. It feels really weird running into the camera. I feel like I'm being chased by an orca right now. 
I should be being chased by an orca as the floor falls apart around me. Um, there we go. Let's go through these windy path. And once this is all done, you get a uh, garment grid for it. From where I am in the game, it's not actually that good of a garment grid. It's not really that essential. I probably won't use it much. Oh, thanks game. I probably won't use it much, but uh, again, this is more for completion. I'm just showing you that this is a thing you can get if you want to. Uh, you could actually get this all the way back in about chapter two, if you follow the right steps, if you got the Poseid key early. So, you know, if you so willed it, you could get the Raging Giant Garment Grid, which... And what does that do? Uh, like I say, not super important for where we are. We have better alternatives, but uh, Raging Giant gives you Confuse Touch and Berserk Touch. Oh, wow. And makes you immune to Confuse and Berserk. I don't know. They're not, they're not actually that good. No, they're really not. There are accessories <laughs> that do better than that. Anyway, we go back to Clasco here, and you'll notice I have a bunch of... Oh! Level 5 Chocobo. Sorry, I said before 4 was the maximum. It's actually 5. Okay. So I spent a long time catching Chocobos in the hopes of getting ones that can actually reach level 5. And I don't want to tell you how many Chocobos that took. I'm talking upwards of like 30, 40 odd. But... Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, once I got them all, you dispatch them all to the Calm Lands. And uh, while we wait for them Chocobos to do things, I'm going to show you that on the Meehan High Road, you can talk to some of the robots to get a manual to rebuild the experiment, if you so will it. And uh, let's do that again. Send them back to the Calm Lands again. You just keep sending them and sending them and sending them until it unlocks this dungeon. That is the goal. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, what, so it doesn't... It, it's just random... It's... Yeah, there's a chance of unlocking this dungeon. Uh, and how would you actually know that? You wouldn't. Uh, even the people who write the FAQs aren't exactly sure of what exact steps you need to follow to unlock the dungeon, even. All they say is if you have a lot of level 5s and you send them repeatedly to the Calm Lands, eventually it'll work. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, this is a random battle in uh, Jose. The reason I show it is because I can learn Stone Breath. Lovely. You can petrify things. Which is good. It can uh, insta-kill random encounters for the most part. But you know what else can do that? Annihilator. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'm still very overly... In fact, I'm so overly reliant, I'm just going to desecrate this guy's dead body with it. Wow. <laughs> just for fun. Just for shits and gigs. Just, yeah, why not? Look what I can do! Annihilator. Yay! That's me! I did that. Wow, that's so overpowered. It is incredibly, incredibly broken. Anyway, after many chocobo journeys, eventually this happens. Lady Yuna, what should I do? What's wrong? This way, hurry! Pain's just like, yeah, I'm what? <laughs> <laughs> I have not got time for this shit, Clasco. The chocobos found it. They seem to have scented one of their own kind. Well, well what? I bet there's an amazing chocobo inside. But wimpy little me can't go find it myself, is that it? <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he immediately owns up to it though, like, yeah, yeah, you got me. Yeah, you're, I can't. Like, for all we know, Clasco's only battle experience is sitting on the back of a chocobo and watching Lucille and Elmer kill things for him. <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah. Well, at least he's doing something. He was there as emotional support more than anything. He was the mascot. Every, every team needs a mascot. You're right, yes, yes. And who's the mascot of our current team? Ooh. Got a, I mean, it's not Yuna and it's not Payne, so... It has to be it's Riku. It's gotta be Riku, doesn't it? Anyway, this dungeon in particular gives you a lot of unique battles that you can't get anywhere else, so unlocking this place is quite a necessity for 100% in your bestiary, if anything. But um, yeah, you get the Sahagin Princess here, who for all intents and purposes aren't that bad, given how highly leveled my team is. I'm not just going to annihilate them, because I kind of want to show you what they can do. <laughs> I, could, I could kill them on the first turn, but... I'll be a bit nicer than that. Wow. And uh, yeah, this dungeon can eat all of the dicks. You need a map for this one. 
And even the maps are hard to read because the dungeon works with different levels. It has like different levels of elevation and different ledges that you can and can't reach depending on where you approach them from. So, um, yeah, it is so, so easy to get lost in here. I cannot imagine how long this would take without a map. It took me an hour with one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. Anyway, this enemy here, a uh, big angry black flan, likes throwing demis at you, but uh, anything that breaks defenses or ignores defenses, or even a volley of physical attacks, are pretty good at dispatching it. So is and Annihilator. Uh, yeah, yeah, Annihilator is very good at pretty much killing everything whenever you want it to, so. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> Difficulty, what's that? <laughs> and would you believe that some of the super bosses in this game are so hard that even Annihilator is not good enough to beat them? Really? Yeah, wow. yeah, it is. Even though everyone's spamming Annihilator? Even with the full squad spamming it, there are some enemies that even even now I can't quite wrap my head around them. I am trying to beat several super bosses at the time of uh, recording this. So that's fun. Um, yeah. Anyway, this dungeon is so goddamn confusing, but there are also loads of chests here with pretty good items in them. So I can't just blitz through to the end. I have to try and 100% it. Yep, you do. There's also a rare encounter in here, a very hard, very rare encounter, which is why you're still seeing screen shattering. As soon as I run into that encounter, I can uh, switch the random encounters off. So let's just push further forward, grabbing more chests, and there are a lot of them. They almost serve as like breadcrumbs. I feel like the chests are your only way of being able to tell where exactly you You've are. You've been. <laughs> yeah, it's your only frame of reference given that all of the walls and the layouts and everything else all looks the bloody same. And there's no mini-map. Anyway, here's Ultima Weapon. Ultima Weapon can just happen in here and it's pretty strong. <laughs> it's pretty goddamn strong. So uh, yeah, just casually knocking 800s off my team. And keeping in mind it can still use shit like Supernova. No, what is probably doing now? Oh no, he's in break. Oh yeah, that too. If I weren't wearing a ribbon, that would have pissed me off. That would have really upset me, given how long and tedious this dungeon is. And there are no save points in it, also. So this is one hell of a marathon run. Oh, judgment. Oh, thank you. That, sure, that's, that's what I need right now. I need to be judged. It's not like I'm the one going through this super hard dungeon on my own volition. Sure, punish me for it, why don't you? <laughs> Tell me I'm a piece of shit. Just piss in my coffee, why don't you? Stop breaking me. Stop using break. Actually, no, keep using it. It doesn't do anything to my squad. Keep using break. Um. Tell you what, I think there's a particular something else I want to do in this battle. I think I'll get around to it at some point. Wow, I took a lot with that absorb. <laughs> That was uh, prosperous. I think I want to turn everyone back into gun mages one more time. Okay, stop using judgment. I'm trying to bait you into doing the different thing. I'm trying to make you do the thing I want you to do. And I don't want to kill you early. I'd rather you do the thing. Please do the thing. Oh, you nearly killed it already. Well, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But that's why I don't want to go all out. I want to let it do its thing first. The thing that I am trying to learn off of it. There we go. Kamari's ultimate attack from the first game. Supernova. Kamari's final overdrive. The most powerful blue magic from the first game. Kind of pales in comparison to Annihilator, but still good. Still, still fun. And you know, I love the animation of it. I think the animation is so over the top and silly that it gives the move an innate charm, so... <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do for the rest of this battle. <laughs> Let's... Annihilator! Well, not just Annihilators, maybe the old Supernova as well. If this Annihilator doesn't kill it, which I'm sure it won't. There we are. Yeah, let's get some, let's get some Supernovas on this sucker. Let's, let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's get spicy up in here. Yuna can just carry on using Absorb because she needs all the health she can get. There we I are. I thought that got um, MP, not health. Oh, both. It does both in this game. It's basically Lancet. 
Oh, wow, well, that's okay. That's why it's the first thing that the Blue Mages can use, uh, well, the first move in their arsenal, because it's representative of how Kamari would use Lancet in the first game. Ah, oh, fair enough. Anyway, um, yeah, Supernova only does 6,000 odd damage, not the 999 that we know and love, but oh, that animation though. It does look nice. It does look very nice. Even though this is, uh, what, the third, fourth time we've seen it. But still, <laughs> I like watching a sun blowing up in what is assumingly the enemy's face. And was that enough? That was enough. That did it. That got him. Do you get anything special for killing him? No. No. <laughs> it's a random encounter. <laughs> you can randomly encounter this motherfucker and he's just really strong. Have fun. Wow, okay. That said, I'm now just going to put the charm bracelet on because you have seen all the enemies in here. You don't need to see me fighting those suckers anymore. So let's put on that bracelet. And... Didn't even get much, like... No, I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't. Let's put on my uh, original dress spheres, the dress spheres I like having on them. I'll give somebody the... Uh... Well, I'll heal up first. I need to heal after that battle. And, uh... Oh, have I forgotten the charm bracelet? I've forgotten the charm bracelet. There we go. Put the charm bracelet on. So I'll get <laughs> I love of... how you automatically know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know myself too well. I've, like, I have seen all the battles here. I've seen all the different enemies. Now let's speed up this footage, or we would be here for the rest of the 40-minute episode just in this cave. This is how... <laughs> Bloody long it takes. Oh, wow. Well. Imagine this with random encounters. I swear you've... There's, I'm literally looking at the same place. No, no, it's all different places. And what you're meant to do is, like, get to the end. There's, like, five exits. Basically, it all kind of goes out into a fork shape, and there are five exits. But if you go to the wrong exit at the wrong time, or when it's not opened yet, then you've got to come back on yourself and go for a different exit before you come back to the one you originally went to. So, this dungeon is so upsetting. <laughs> the idea, the mere idea of doing this without a guide is... It, it borders on flagellant. It, it borders on self-harm, I feel. <laughs> like, it's just... God, I want this video game to hurt me. It's the same... It'd be the same rush I'd get out of playing Darkest Dungeon. Is oh, running through, Fucking Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, it would be running through this without an FAQ. By the by, uh, right there, I got an AP egg. That's a great item. Uh, triples your AP. You what? You, you, uh, you learn moves three times as quickly. If you give that item to a... Um, this is jumping the gun a bit, but if you give it to a monster that's on your party, it triples their XP. It triples the speed they level up at. So that is super helpful in New Game Plus. And it Do was, you only have one? I only have the one, but you could get another one on another playthrough of the game. And... Uh, Oh hey, boss fight! No, it's Chocobo Eater. It is a, it's an anything eater. It's the more powerful version of Chocobo Eater from the first game's monster arena. Nice, annihilate. And he goes straight. <laughs> he goes straight in with a fucking flare. Do you think I deserve that after going through this dungeon? <laughs> do you think I need a boss that can one shot me? Do you think I'm? Do you think that's fair game? Yep. Apparently it does. Well, I'm gonna start annihilating this sucker because. Why the hell wouldn't I if it's going to do shit like that? Thankfully, its elemental magic is piss weak. Don't know why, it just is. So, let's annihilate. Bang. Let's get all of the 9,999s up in your face. I've got plenty of MP, so it's not going to run out anytime soon. Don't you know the thing where you can wreck them Only one. Oh, Okay, so is yeah, that you know who's got that one? I'll have more later, don't worry, but yeah, I've only got the one for now. Eh, there we go. Wow. He only had like 20,000 odd health, or less than that, just under 20,000 uh, 20, health, so... He had like, what, 18,999, something along those lines. Anyway, um, that's the Anything Eater, and just because I beat him doesn't mean I'm done yet, because I've got to go open a bunch of exits now in order to progress. So I've got to go back on myself and come back to this area, but from different parts of the dungeon. What? Why? <laughs> why though? <laughs> but why? That's my question. That's my prevailing question is why? I guess while we're here, I'll point out that there is also a, um, 
Uh, there's another manual in here somewhere. Another manual to rebuild the experiment again if you wanted to do that. So you go for all of this and then they just give you a manual. What a kick in the teeth. Well, you get the AP egg. The main thing you want from this place is the AP egg. Once you've got that, you are pretty much golden in terms of grinding. And for New Game Plus, it is borderline essential to stop the game from, from like grinding to a halt, grinding-wise. So, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> look, at, look at her go. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Alright, and another exit. Let's go out another way. I think this is the one I came to first, in fact. Treasure chest. Actually, no, I can just push forward. There we are. And I think there was one more exit I've not taken yet, so let's take the last exit. Or is there? No, there is one. It's just really hard to get to. You've got to go really high. You've got to elevate really high, so, um... You go up. No, shit, I've got to go back on myself, like, right to the beginning, and <laughs> fuck. I'm getting confused on where you are. I, I would be as well. <laughs> I'll put the map on the screen now, of all times, even though we've pretty much seen the dungeon. This is what it looks like. This is what some poor soul, hello, some poor soul in the world has navigated all on their own. And your burgers are done, Sam, just so you know. I noticed. <laughs> all right, um, I think we're done here, aren't we? Are we done here? I'm pretty sure we're done. Is that the last yes? Yes! Yay. Woo! <laughs> Made it. Lovely. And out we go. That is the end of that. We get a perfect chocobo that will never run away. Uh, you, I don't even think you have to feed it. And uh, it's great at finding items, so... Yay! All that just for a chocobo. Pain acknowledges the fact that it's not even, like, recolored. It's just a chocobo. You could have made it, like, golden or red or just give it a different color. Something to make it like feel a blue special. blue one or... A Purple one, a or chocobo with a green one, a chocobo that wears a big medal that says "Well done, you are great at dungeons" on it in very small font. That's what I want. They make a cute couple, don't you think? So we were just going with the theory that Clasco is a massive bird fucker. Is that what, is that what, okay? Cool. Yes, yeah, that's let's, what it is. Let's roll with that. We have higher made. power garment grid. What's that do? That is a great garment grid. It allows you to break the damage limit. <laughs> Which is very good for Annihilator. Annihilator! It's very good for that. So, um, we have two more hotspots to do. I said earlier that there was a glitch where you do not get access to the most powerful Dress Sphere if you do Zanakund last. Which is bollocks because it's the last one in the list, so most people would naturally do it last. last. But that is the reason I'm doing Zanakund and then Bavel. So that glitch doesn't kick in, and it was never fixed, which is a bit of a, a bit of a bollocking. Yeah. Well, what does the glitch actually do? It just means you just can't get to a certain location, or...? It means if you end with an episode complete that doesn't automatically take you back up to the airship, which Zanakins doesn't, you don't get the cutscene, you don't, the cutscene where you get the ultimate dress sphere does not kick in. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, um... It is some bollocks. Although, thankfully, in this version of the game, there is an alternate way of getting that dress sphere, but it requires, um, it requires it requires using the creature creator and attending tournaments. So, uh, it's like a lot more long-winded when you it's, can just do it this it's way. It's very long-winded. Yeah. yeah, not that this wasn't. This was completing the whole game pretty much. So, yeah. Thankfully, there is an alternative. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. That was easy. That was Anakin. But there is one more thing we need to do here. We need to address a certain elephant in the room. An elephant that has been in the room since the first game. And only now does the game flat out say it. Vegnagun. Not Vegnagun. More, more Machen himself. Oh, we finally find out who he is. Yeah, yeah. Although Vegnagun was constructed during the Machina War, there is no record of it ever being used. One could argue that the coming of sin made war a secondary concern. But the real reason was that Vegnagun was nothing short of a titanic failure. 
You see, it was quick to respond to hostility, but lacked the ability to discern friend from foe. A weapon that slaughters indiscriminately would be far too dangerous for actual use in combat. Incidentally, this is why Vegnagan was never considered as a measure to combat sin. Instead, it was locked away under Bavel. Jeez, Gramps, you really know a lot. So how does Machen know so much about Spira's history? How has he known everything for the past two games? Well... This... should explain things. <gasps> Machen has been unsent this whole time. Oh. Throughout the whole series he has been dead. And that's how he's always there. That's how he's always around. And how he knows everything, even stuff from oh, thousands of no. years ago, he was there. And, uh, yeah, early in the game he shook Yuna's hand. If you remember, if you look at the dress sphere, if you watch the dress sphere that Len is contained in, it's a sphere that I believe was recorded by Machen, where he's going on about how happy he was to shake her hand. It's his voice. It was Len. Oh, it's yeah. him when he was alive. So it's like, oh my god, it all comes to it's all it all comes back to Machen. Two different people from two distant times with exactly the same handshake. That's weird. It's so good. I love it's it. It's good, but I don't know. It's one of my favourite plot points of this game. It really is. I knew he was God or Jesus. <laughs> He's pretty much Jesus. He's spear of Jesus. The many people I have known have all journeyed to the far plain, leaving only me behind. It is quite lonely. Gramps? Oren, Braska and Jet. The big three. Father? Do forgive me. My memories seem to have a mind of their own. So people really are connected. Ah, oh, but of course. Well, Machen, thank you. I hope we meet again. As do I. And now he's gone off to the far plane with them. That is the end of Machen. That is. Oh uh, no! That's it. Well, he was, he's been dead this whole time. He's decided he wants to be sent, so he's gone and sent himself. Oh, I'm kind of upset about it, but happy for the same time. I mean, the guy's like a thousand years old. He, he deserves to rest in peace at this point. <laughs> Let's be honest. As I guess so. gorgeous as his voice is, I could listen to him for years. I could listen to him forever. I could listen to him the, for the rest of my life, but <laughs> he does need to go eventually. He needs to do audiobooks. He, he probably does. The vo his voice actor probably does. Aren't you a member of the Youth League? What are you doing in front of New Yevon's headquarters? I've been asking myself the same question. Look. Your allies now. My brother heard that Bavel was a mess and came all the way from Xanarkin. Hey, he can do what he wants, but what I want to know is, how did I get dragged into this? You're protecting Bavel together. Yeah, I guess that's about right. Somebody's got to watch his back. Hey, hey, what you talking about? We're talking about how brothers have to stick together. Oh, okay. See you later, Lady Yuna. Kindergartians, move out! Yes, sir! Yeah, they're turning into a regular kinder core. Well, at least they're having fun. Maybe fun is all this world really needs. <laughs> Isaru's changed too, huh? Him? He'll never change. <sighs> he goes around playing superhero and leaves us with all the headaches. Hey, I know someone like that. Oh, someone who goes around playing superhero, is it? You mean brother? 
Wrong. Buddy? Nope. Well, uh, Riku, why don't we get going? You just casually slag off Yuna and walk away. It's all yep. good. <laughs> It's all right, bye. And that's the end of Bevel. That is episode complete with the three brothers united. Yay. It's quite sad when they stay separated. You get the Scourge Bane garment grid, which is okay, I guess. But more importantly than that, I have got an episode complete in every single area, which means we get, aside from its lack of Annihilator, the most powerful dress sphere in the game. The final dress sphere. A special bonus for the gold wings. Oh, they look great on you. I um want one too. Splendid work. Gosh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> we get to be furries. Mascot. Awesome! Wow! <laughs> Fun times!